to the bones floating on the surface of the boiling oil. What do you think someone like me and you would do? Put yourself in that situation. You know, because we listen to the story, but we don't put ourselves in this. Put yourself. I want you to imagine you are on a wooden cross. Your hands are tight. Your feet are tight. Your brothers, your beloved brothers, you just saw their bones in the worst way possible. What would you do? He tells you, we're going to throw you in. Say, Allah, ya akhi, not I am going to accept your deen. I will tell you where Muhammad is hiding, and I will tell you how you can kill Muhammad, and I will tell you how to destroy the Muslims. Just let me go. Isn't that the truth? Because we have no pride, no glory in our deen. Because we left it. Because we only choose what we like. And whatever we don't like, we put it aside. We don't want to stand up for the haq anymore. We don't want to say the word of the truth anymore. We rather hide behind our fingers. We rather hide behind the shadows. We rather call ourselves, I'm not Muhammad, I'm Michael. La'anatullahi ala Michael. Yani, that person who changes his name. Allah blessed you with the name Muhammad, the praised one. That's what it literally means. Then you deny it and reject it and put it behind your back. A brother gave you a beautiful feature, the feature of a Muslim. Why do you want to change your feature to a feature of a kafir? What would you do in that, in that place? Abdullah ibn Hudhafa start to cry. Then the king said, Khalas! I broke his spirit and I broke his soul. He said, why are you crying? Huh? Now you're going to come humble to me and seek apology? He said, no, 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 no. I wish I have a thousand souls can die fi sabilillah. He said to him, now I know I can't break you. Ikhwa, analyze the situation. Why would someone utter such words? Analyze the situation. Why would someone like Abdullah ibn Hudhafa utter such words? He uttered such words because he knows that the only glory is in Islam. The pride is in Islam. And once you abandon Islam, you have nothing left. Even if you have your millions, even if you have your citizenship, even if you have your passport, is no pride except in Islam. There is no glory except in Islam. There is no way except the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Allah said, in the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is a hadith Qudsi, if they come to me from every door, and from every way, they will not enter the Jannah except behind you, Ya Muhammad. So Abdullah understood this. And Abdullah understood, radiyallahu anhu, is, وَأَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حق, That the promise of Allah is, the true promise. Then when he promises something, he's going to give. He's not going to deprive. He's going to give. That's why he stood fast to the last. And then the king, he said, Tab, just kiss my head. Just give me some, something so I can let you go. Just so I don't get humiliated in front of my people. He said, under one condition. Who's putting the conditions now? Who's putting the condition? The strong or the weak? Who? Who's putting the conditions? Abdullah. He's now putting the conditions. He said, now I put the conditions. If you release everyone with me. Then he released them. And then he kissed his forehead. Radiallahu anhu wa Shuf subhanallah. When you have pride in Islam. Look at Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. Look at Ab, uh, 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 Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. You know Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He, has, he had legs like twigs. Very, very, very small and skinny. You know the skinniest person you see? The, the, the shortest and the skinniest person? That's Ab, Ab, uh, uh, Abdullah, ibn, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. That's how he is. Skinny and with the skinny legs. He's so skinny that in the battle when he wanted to cut off the head of 
Abu Jahl, he had to stand on his chest. And then to cut off his head, then he tied it with the rope and he couldn't pick it up. You know why? Because it's full of Jahl. It's too heavy with Jahl. So he had to drag it. That's Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Tayyib. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when he became a Muslim, what did he do? He is, he used to work for Abu Jahl. He used to work for him. He was a worker, mind his sheep. Poor person. Weak in body. But when he accepted Islam, this weak, small person became a lion of Islam. Because he became someone that Quraysh could not handle his words anymore. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going to go to Mecca, I'm going to sit under the Kaaba and recite the Quran. And let them do what they like. Prophet said, Hawan alayk, take it easy. These people that, yani Abu Jahl, so jahil, that he probably he grabs you, he will break you to pieces in his hand. He said, I don't care. What happened? The pride in Islam came to his heart. Changed the person inside out. He went to read the Quran. And then the Quraysh's attacked him and beat him up. So severely that they cut off his ear. Then he go back the next day. And he go back the next day. Because he found the glory is in Tawheed. The glory is in La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. The glory is in Islam by following the Quran, but not fearing anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By having Allah as your companion and as your friend, He is the wali of the true awliya of Allah. The source of help is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the source of support is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By adhering to the Quran and Sunnah, by going back to Islam and living Islam as it's supposed to be lived and adopting Islam, not just the image of Islam, not just the short thawb and the siwar and the beard and beautiful speeches, no, by going back and implementing Islam, implementing the Tawheed in your life, implementing the Wala and Bara, implementing Islam, this is when you get back to the glory. But just like this, soup, everything goes, whatever, yalla, salad, tabule, everything accepted, no, you're not going to go nowhere. You're going to remain stagnant and, and you will always be humiliated. Amr ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, you know the story, he accepted Islam. He entered in the deen of Islam. He said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, why are we giving a secret da'wah? You have to remember, ya ikhwah, there were minority like you are. Maybe, or they were oppressed more than you are. You say, how? Of course. Do you do your da'wah secret now or in its own open? So no open. They used to do a secret da'wah. Whisper. One of them will be scared about his life. Just by talking to Muhammad sallam, he'll be scared that the Quraysh now going to torture him. Just by talking to Muhammad sallam, by just being with him. And the brother is scared to come to the masjid. You know why? Because maybe the masjid is bugged. Allah, your head is bugged with bugs. That's the truth. Where is the pride of Islam and not fearing except Allah? Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu when he accepted Islam. He said to the Prophet sallallahu straight away the pride start to work in his heart of who he is. He's a Muslim now, Muhammad. He said, what are we scared of? Are we on the help? He said, yes. Are they on falsehood? Are they the kuffar, al malain He said, yes. He said, khalas. Let's go and tell him about Islam. Let's go out in the open. That's why he deserves the label Al Faruq. Al Faruq means the one who separated between Haq and battle, between false, between Haq, truth, and falsehood, the battle. Out of pride. And even in Surah Al Hudaybiyah, shoot, shoot the pride how much? In Islam, not the wrong pride. The, your pride of your um, Ferrari and Porsche, your pride of your muscles, your pride of your six pack, your pride that you're six feet tall. That's the wrong pride. Or you're white, you have blue eyes, or because you're tall and tall, dark and handsome. 
That's not the pride. That's not the pride, ya ikhwah. The pride is pride by Islam. In Surah Al-Hudaybiyah, in the Hudaybiyah Treaty, what did um, Umar radiallahu anhu do? The Prophet ﷺ is signing the treaty. They said, they said to the Prophet ﷺ, write, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So Hayl ibn Amr, he said, but we don't recognize the Rahman ar-Rahim. We only know Allah. Say, Bismik Allahum. He rubbed it. He said, this is what Muhammad, Muhammad Rasulullah agree on. He said, we don't like this Rasulullah. Take it. Because if we believe you're Rasulullah, we would have told you. Take it. He, Umar radiallahu anhu, lost it. He said, Ya Rasulullah, what's this? He wouldn't accept it even from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he regretted that after Umar radiallahu anhu. Why did I question Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, yani, what's this now? Why, why are we compromising with them? We don't need to compromise with them. Remember, they were weak, 1400 only, weaponless. They had nothing. He said, why would we agree to such? How can we deny that you are Rasulullah? He said, calm down. I am Rasulullah. He went to Abu Bakr. The man, his brains couldn't handle it. He couldn't accept it. He said, Ya Abu Bakr, aren't we on the half? He said, yes. So they're false. He said, yes. He said, why then we accept this humility in our deen? He said, Ya Umar, he is a Rasulullah. Be with him. Khalas, don't argue with Rasulullah The point, Umar radiallahu anhu, because he knew he was on the haq, and he was proudful of, and with, the haq. He was proudful of it. That he is on the haq and on the truth. That's why he won't, doesn't want to compromise not even that much. Even that it's Prophet Wasallam who's signing the treaty. But Umar radiallahu anhu did not know the wisdom. Allah called it, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. We have opened to you, O Muhammad, a great opening. This is something in ilm Allah and through a revelation. These are as sabiqun al awwal the proudful Muslims. These are who understood the pride of Islam. That's why Allah then blessed them with Badr and blessed them with all the, the victorious battles that you heard of. Do you think the battle of Badr, the Muslims would have won it if, if they are like us now? Let's be honest. If they are like us now, would they won battle of Badr? No. Because they knew Islam. They were proudful of their deen. They implemented Islam. Then Allah said, وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَجْحَ ذِلَّةٍ Allah gave you the victory of Badr and you were humiliated. But that victory came with a lot of steps towards us. It didn't come from nowhere. It didn't come from nothing. The companions went through Mecca and learned the hard way. So the Muslim, when he expects victory, he has to work hard for that victory. And it starts with you. To implement Islam. To have the right understanding of Islam. The right understanding of Tawheed. And that Allah is the only one worthy of worship. All the acts of your heart, loving Allah, loving the true awliya of Allah. Not the wali who died 1,000 years or 500 years and he flies in the air and jumps. No, the wali who's sacrificing everything fi sabilillah. He sacrificed the wealth and his life fi sabilillah by loving awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By loving the, the brothers in Islam. By establishing the correct brotherhood in Islam. By having the love and by having the hate towards everyone who hates this deen. Because he hates Allah. Enemies of Allah. To, to implement the true reliance on Allah. At-tawakkul ala Allah. By implementing the true acceptance of reliance on Allah. By accepting the, the traits of reward.